Today we're going to look at some images from Pulp Fiction and from comics from the year 1939, just before the world staggered back into global warfare. Somewhere inside of us we always know when mayhem is at our door, and the Pulps had it right long before the air raid sirens started going off. Who are those masked and menacing hordes? The artist sure gets the sense of panic right, and the woman's expression is fit for a fear and tyrant besieged world about to explode. Her face is the 1939 version of Edward Munch's The Scream. Because the 1930s and 40s come to us mostly in black and white images framed by that compelling narrative of the depression of the 30s giving way to the collective fervor and sense of mission of the war years, the sheer vibrancy and range of people's interests at the time seems to get a bit muted, grayed out, almost as if into a black and white dream. So here's a time capsule black and white moment frozen in time to shake the dust off the period to bring its obsessions alive in all their perverse and colorful vibrancy. Today we'll look mostly at detective pulps and what a twisted, edgy, transgressive, fantastic, highly sexed and often violent world it was. And now about this pulp called Spider. Here's the issue displayed on the newsstand. The spider, master of men, with its hemorrhaging blood dim tide months before it goes from fantasy to real carnage. And the doctors who are supposed to heal gone vile and malignant. Satan's workshop, that's just so sinister, but I have a feeling she's going to be okay. King of the Red Killers has such a familiar feeling about it. Those faces run, run. The theme of great peril and superhero rescuer is an ancient formula in art and myth, but it's taking on real urgency as we head toward global war. The serpent of destruction is right. It's imminent, but for now, see that spider ring? It means that at least for her, everything's going to be okay. Lots of the original art from Pulps has disappeared, but more turns up every day. I will include the original artwork whenever available. Often it has a vibrancy that's utterly transporting. This is by the great Pulp and paperback illustrator Rafael de Soto. Quite similar to the Spider Master in his single-handed warfare against all evil, but much more concerned with imagined international and Political perils was Operator Number 5. Super Spy Operator 5 lasted 48 issues from 1934 to 1939, and he battles every kind of imaginable menace and evil coming at you in groups. But by the middle of 1939, reality overtook fantasy, and the newspaper had all the menace anyone needed, and it was time to shelve Operator 5. Now, Operator 5 is really your ordinary guy. His name's Jimmy Christopher, and he has a girlfriend named Diane Elliott and a boss who is the director of a secret federal intelligence agency, Z7. And I know it looks bad for those tied to the stake, but Operator 5 is going to parachute in and save the day. Jimmy was the James Bond of the day in his outrageous tactics to combat all evil. By 39, it's goodbye, Jimmy, but wait 14 years till 1953, and it's hello, James. James Bond in 1953, Casino Royale. The same year, the threat of atomic warfare becomes the threat of thermonuclear war. The common ground between Operator 5 and 007 are more than sharing a first name. These Paperbacks are not pulps, but if you want to know what happened to pulps, paperback happened. I so like James Bond. Hi, Zach. Okay, back to 1939 and from Operator 5 to Detective Fiction Weekly. This cover is by the truly amazing Rudolf Bolarski. 
menace in back of her and menace in front. 30s illustrators were extremely good at mapping peril. But Bolarski's women are always staring right at you, enthralling your heart while your mind deliberately avoids the danger. And this is by Bolarski as well. The camera in the picture ups the drama of spectatorship where we're both participants in the scene and recorders of it. I love this painting, and I love her eyes. And I forget we are in a world of noir and femme fatales where nothing is ever quite what it seems and where the eyes are going to get you every time. The movie magazines on the bottom row are endlessly fascinating. And keep in mind, this is the year of Stagecoach and The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind, all which came out in 1939. Scanning up, you'll find the standard fashion magazines. And what a delightful time capsule of 1939 they give us. Notice the high heels and silk stockings magazines. I've been looking at issues of those for a future video, and they are edgy and fetishistic and fun. Then look at all the detective magazines. True Detective and Real Detective and True Crime and Daring Detective and Front Page Detective and inside detective and master detective and the list goes on then there's clues detective which has some of my favorite covers ever just amazing and then there's black book detective and check these out And Crime Busters, which is occasionally very, very graphic. So much so, I had to blur out the issue on this newsstand. And of course, we can't leave out Candid Detective. what about detective comics? Comics don't really fit unless you take a look at the next four sequential issues and take a very good look at the last one. That and the action comics just below it on the shelf will help explain why my next video is called the $30 million newsstand rack. If you enjoyed this video, please click subscribe. There are lots more videos about illustrators, pulp, art, and literature coming your way. Thank you.